Right. Okay, so starting with threading. Um, and this I've already said a little bit about, but um, before... Um, well, how we're going to do this is I'm going to talk about the sort of the general idea and where this fits in, and then Ross is going to get on to specifics. Um, these are, this is what I thought about research skills. This is what I thought as an academic, um, and we had recently at Reading redesigned the degree um, with skills development from part one, part two, and part F, as they say at Reading, um, with a different set of skills. And I'm teaching the second year, so I, I was developing what had happened in the first year. Um, and so the skills we want, law is a particular discipline, um, finding and using its distinctive sources, and that, of course, is uh, what we used to call library skills. Um, but ordinary research skills, too, and you notice I put paper form because that's also an issue for our students, some of whom have never set foot in a library. And interestingly, although our students do get taken to the library, we also, and I think some other institutions are in this situation where, that's fine, we take some students into the third year who've spent, who've had their first two years in some Asian country. Um, and these students come and see me. They're lovely students, they're bright and they're, they're really nice. But they, they literally have never been in a library. Often there is no library in their institution or just a small room. Um, critical skills, which I've talked about um, before, going beyond the textbook is a really important thing for me because I think not only um, students, but academics are a bit stuck to the textbook sometimes. And critical skills, and then using sources ethically, and, and I, you know, I feel this particularly as someone who actually produces knowledge, as many academics do, it's very irritating. It's lovely when students read something that you've written. It's terrible when they steal your ideas, and it makes you realise that they haven't actually understood that knowledge doesn't just exist out there for them to cut and paste literally, although that would be plagiarism, or alternatively just paraphrase or, or, or take, take the footnotes. Um, so those are the things that I had in mind. And the understandings that we had come to at Reading um, were that skills taught in isolation, we have a legal skills module in the first year, as I'm sure many of you do, are less well learned than skills taught in context. And also there's this thing about once you pass the subject, you can forget about it. So I teach land law, which has a lot of contract in it. And when I asked the students about you know, some contract thing, well, that was last year. <laughs> the fact that it might actually be relevant to buying and selling land or mortgages or whatever um, had passed them by. They, they do. Um, so it's the same with skills. Yes, OK, we learned how to do footnotes in, in first year, but actually I'd forgotten. Um, and the, the other point is that um, skills are best learnt in the, in the context of substantive subjects. So although it's good to have a legal skills module, it's probably essential. And we've gone over to a, to a new model where it's done in three weeks at the, at, at the beginning of the first year. We used to do this at Westminster when I worked there, and that worked very well. The only problem is that increasingly institutions are accepting students very, very late. And we've got students, particularly from abroad, who have visa problems, who come in in week four and they've missed the entire module. So that is actually quite difficult. But what we learnt then is we're actually going to build it into the substantive subject. So in the second year, which is where I teach, I have a module, which is a property law module, which carries the skills element for the whole of the, the second year because they all have to do it. That's not to say others don't have skills. It's just that we, we build the skills in there, the particular skills we want them to have at, at second year. Um, there is this, I don't know, librarian set me right if I'm wrong about this, but I have this feeling that there's a hierarchy in universities. <laughs> and the lecturer, especially the professor, is the font, uh, fount of all wisdom. Um, and the librarian is a technician, okay? And so if you do use that, now that's great. Some places that's not the case. And um, that's good. And certainly it's not something that I would ever encourage. And maybe it doesn't exist at Reading, does it? Ross, no one thinks of you as a technician, do they? Yeah, I think we'll have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I do think that sometimes this is the case, and it does depend a lot on the academic's attitude, of course, um, and that students don't take as seriously something perhaps that the, that, the, that the librarian has taught them, even though, in fact, it may be better than what, more than I know, because I'm so out of date with these sorts of things. Um, this one, I think, is really important to me, which is that librarians can't always second guess what we're, what we're looking for. And this was, as I said, this sort of moment when I realised I'm setting all these assessments. The librarians are helping the students do them. 
and they don't know what I want because I haven't actually told them. Well, if I haven't told them, of course, I do tell Ross. I do discuss it with Ross. But in the past, I would not necessarily have said that. Um, and, of course, it goes without saying that, that librarians have got knowledge, knowledge of how students learn apart from anything else, um, which we don't have. I mean, you, you see it much more than we do. Um, and skills, clearly, because we need you to teach us um, that we don't have. So it made sense then when we are designing this new module, which um, Ross is going to say more about, uh, that we should work together. And so um, Ross and I, and we have a tutor as well who's also involved now, um, the three of us get together and we, we, we designed the module together, we designed uh, the, and delivered it together, um, and we assess it together. And that, I think, is fairly unusual for librarians in that um, it, there are several parts of, to the, to this, of assessment to this module, and one of them is a, is a, is a poster um, which is advising um, people who want to um, buy property together. So it's, it's the classic kind of joint tenancy, tenancy in common, don't get caught you know, with implied trust or whatever. Um, make sure you get your name on the documents, that sort of thing. So the students work on this in groups. And Ross and the tutor, Amy, and I all, all assess that together. And that was good, because Ross, although he's not actually a lay person, because he has a law degree, um, he can, in, in, in fact, sort of assess the information, not from the expert point of view. Um, and it was one of the things, presentation and how you convey legal information in lay terms was, was obviously one of the learning outcomes. Um, so I think that's really important. And I, it was sensible, because I knew what I wanted from this module. It's, I designed the content. It was around my own research, um, I particularly want students to take a socio-legal approach and so on. Um, but on the other hand, I can't, as it happens, do um, workbooks online and online quizzes and these sorts of things. And he does them brilliantly. I knew that because I was part of the panel that interviewed him for the job. Um, and so he could, you know, we could talk about what case we wanted to focus on and he could teach them, but he's going to talk about that later anyway. Um, so that was done online. Um, and of course, the final thing, because the students identify Ross very clearly with the law school, um, the students would be turning to him as well as me. And in that way, I think the librarian becomes an integral part of the teaching research skills team. But then I, that's how I concluded, actually, when I spoke at the summit two weeks ago. Then I realised that actually, <laughs> in many cases, it's the librarians who own this. It isn't even us. I, I, I thought we did own it. I thought I owned my own skills teaching. And I think, actually, that in many cases, in many institutions, it's really the librarians who own it, that they're the ones who are doing it, that they're the ones who are delivering it. And so I suppose what I, I, I'm, I'm asking for is that we should also, the academics should also be in there and know what you're doing. Because I'm, I, I tell you, we don't know everything that you're doing and all the skills that you're teaching them and all the ways that you're showing them. Um, how to do things that probably we can't even do. So uh, I think it, it's, it's both ways. Right, on to Ross. Okay, um, I joined the University of Reading in 2010, taking over from a colleague in Sainsbury, who some of you might remember, remember or know. Um, and he'd been there for 20, 30 years, so there was quite an established provision of legal skills research training into which I walked. And I'd come from Warwick, uh, where I'd worked with Helen Riley at Warwick, and we had a certain way of doing legal research. And then I came to Reading uh, and moved into that program. It quickly became apparent to me that the actual involvement of the librarian in the research skills teaching was less than I was accustomed to at Warwick. Uh, and I was keen myself to have greater involvement, obviously, as an appropriate, in an appropriate manner, not just to shoehorn my way in there or bulldoze my way into saying, I'll do these sessions. Um, there was an established first year uh, legal skills module and also research and writing skills modules that were delivered primarily by the law school. Into part of that, I do have some input into the legal skills module, but certainly skills teaching at the institution was very much front-loaded. There was a focus on very early first-term um, teaching for the year one students, 
And as part of the legal skills training they had, Westlaw and Lexis would come in and would deliver their, base, their basic training on use of those products. But I had no involvement in that. I was arranged through the law school. Uh, I did go and watch one. Just so I got an understanding of what level of tuition they were having on Westlaw and Lexis and what wasn't being covered. Because I was mindful that as students were moving into their second and third years and were doing research writing credit modules and also doing their dissertation, there wasn't any noticeable progression in terms of their, not necessarily their skills in communication or in writing, but more the skills in terms of being able to identify what was the problem they needed to answer, how do you go about constructing a um, search strategies based on that question, a knowledge of the resources we have and how they linked into their um, modules, and looking at the more advanced function functionality of, that, of our legal resources and how they could assist them in doing those modules. There was, there was, nobody was doing that type of training. I was a little bit concerned that they had their basic Westlaw or their Lexus. They didn't have knowledge of why the databases had online. They weren't developing um, understanding and competences in terms of developing effective searches and strategies in that way. So I was keen in doing something to address that. So I had this, at least I felt I had this expertise, but to a degree it was being underused. Um, I did have input in the first year in terms of teaching, teaching the use of print resources, but I wasn't really seen in any context in relation to electronic resources, and there wasn't this necessary linkage between the understanding of use of print resources to the understanding of electronic resources. So I wanted to do something, and I could have just arranged sessions in the library, invited the entire second year to come along, but I got a sense that if I do, did that, I was only going to touch a certain number of students and I wouldn't have the level of impact and penetration that I, I was desiring. So I was looking for a way in, basically. And the way proved to be Rosemary's uh, module, property law project module, which first ran two years ago, so it's running in its second year now. So from discussions we had, I knew Rosemary was keen in looking at developing something new, and I felt that I had something to offer in terms of developing students' research skills through that module. I knew Rosemary was very keen that students had a better understanding of all red cases and had a better understanding of development of law through case law and precedent rather than just reading head notes or just reading the summary of a case in a textbook but they had an understanding of how law within a certain subject, and we're looking at uh, property law and shared ownership, how that had developed over time, and they, were just, they understood how cases related to each other. So we had this discussion, but how can we build that into the programme, and I was looking at building a way of better using Westlaw and Lexis, our databases, to enable students to, if they were looking for journal commentary or they were looking for certain materials on a subject that they, they knew which databases to use, and they had a better idea of how to construct effective searches of those to bring out <coughs> material. So we developed two particular elements within the program. The first was a self-paced tutorial, so they, did, this is, they do independently, and that consists of three different elements. In the first year, I briefly touch on case citators and statute citators, mainly because I'm keen that they understand what those things are and what they do, so that when they find that information on Westlaw and Lexis, they have an appreciation of, of what those products are telling them uh, and how they might be used. But I didn't want to go into too much detail about those products in the first year because I think it's too much for them. So in the second year, we used that as a basis for explaining the use of print and legislation citations through some videos that I produced. That's then used as a basis for understanding, well, as you move into Lexis, as you move into Westlaw, just site as well. When you're looking at a case, and it's not just there in isolation, there is information that is there within the database that can enable you to link together cases and the development of cases and how a particular cases have been interpreted by other cases in the future, the different levels of treatment, 
rather than them just saying, I read this case, they read that case, but they're not understanding the broader picture of how the cases relate to each other and how law has developed in particular in time. And indeed, whether a particular case of everything, is it still good law? How, how do they check that? How do they do that? So we did that through a workbook. So I developed a workbook where we'll take, it guides them through exercises on Westlaw, on Lexis, but around the basis of the case of Gissing versus Gissing, which is Rosemary's uh, idea, that was your direction. Um, so something that they were looking at in the lecture, and they were covering a topic, we were using that as a basis for walking through those steps and explaining the information that students would find through the workbook. And finally, for this tutorial, they have to do an online quiz, which is on Blackboard. It hasn't been made part of formal assessment, so it's, it's feedback as opposed to anything that will count towards a mark, but the idea is that they can give themselves the opportunity to test what they have learned through a Westlaw exercise. There are nine questions based around the case of Burns versus Burns and interpreting the information they are being told about that particular case. That's done through a multiple choice quiz. The second element was there is an actual module to tutorial of which students will attend and is taught by one of Rosemary's colleagues. And rather than give them a list of these are articles you're going to read for the seminar, come to the tutorial, we're going to discuss them. The actual reading is in the case of a worked exercise that will guide them through um, developing search strategies based around shared ownership and we were looking in the first year at a particular law commission report that Rosemary had wanted the students to look at. So as, using that as a platform, we were then looking at how you would think about building subject searches and search for journal commentary and related material on the library's databases and taking them through that exercises through the means of a workbook and at the end of each task there were questions that would prompt them, hopefully, to think about what they had discovered and how it relates to the module content. And those questions were then feeded into the formal questions that they were expected to discuss at the tutorial with Rosemary's colleague. I was not actually involved in the delivery of the tutorial itself. I was delivered in the, uh, I was in my involvement was in the preparation of the work they had to they were expected to do before they went to the tutorial. Just have a little look quickly to give you an idea. What I have done is I've made available the two PDF workbooks that I've prepared, so that if people want to look at those, hopefully they're available with the slides after the session. But they're a little bit heavy to go into. Let's check if this is going to work. Okay, quick login to... Okay, that's peculiar. Okay. Just a moment. Hopefully this is going to work, but we will, if it's not, then we will skirt around it. Um, okay, let's find my property law project. Okay, lovely. Appears to be having issues with the University of Reading, but okay, here we are. Uh, as Rosemary said, one of the key assessments of this was the creation of a poster at the end of it where students working groups are now expected to um, convey legal principles to a lay audience through the means of a poster. In terms of my involvement, the video is a little bit slow at the moment, so please bear with me on this. So the videos are within Blackboard and there's one video on checking whether a case is still good law using a code law case citation and one and whether legislation is still good law. I'm not going to play those to you. Perhaps not the most exciting of videos for you to watch. You've heard enough of my voice uh, in any case. But also, these videos set the essential historical and legal contents for the, for, for the self-paced tutorial workbook. So they gain an understanding of the case law actually does, it's not static. 
Things do change. Sometimes cases are overruled. You can't just rely on a case because it neatly fits your facts that you found it from 1950. You need to understand what's changed to the legal principles since. So that's why we came up with the self-based tutorial workbook and as I say, I will make that available to people who want to have a look at what actually we've prepared. And there was also then the, tutor the workbook for the actual taught tutorial. Ultimately, the self-based tutorial would conclude with them undertaking the online quiz that was prepared on Blackboard, which looks like this. So to give you an idea of the kind of quest level of question we're accessing, some of it's fairly basic, but we're getting the tool to actually under read a case report rather than just looking at the head now. So the first question is locate Burns and Burns on Westlaw, in which court was this case heard? So they will answer, draw that information from them. The second question, interestingly, is the one they find the hardest to answer, at least to get right. According to the court, might Burns and Burns have been decided differently if the parties had been married? Now, to answer this question, you do actually have to read the judgment. <laughs> so possibly that's why they're having issues, and they are. <laughs> there are two particular quotes that will give them the answer. Some people have said, no, it's not clear. I'm just going to give take some of the answers here so we can see what feedback they get at the end. So, case analysis, which of all cases was not cited, etc., which was the earliest case in which Burns was judicially cited, okay. In which case was Burns and Burns distinguished, so again, they're needing to identify and draw out the case law. But the cases are being, they are being picked because they're known to be cases that they are going to be dealing with in the course of their lectures and they are going to be coming across these. So Stack and Dowden figures heavily, uh, as does Jones versus Kernot. The other question they had problems with was, in total, how many House of Lords and Supreme Court cases have cited Burns v. Burns? I'm not quite sure why they're finding that case particularly difficult. It's really just a case of counting. Which particular cases? Whether they're, they're, they're having difficulty drawing out the Supreme Court case, I'm not quite sure, um, but they are struggling with that. And then we get a discussion about Burns in Stack and Darden, and then at the end they submit their answers. They should. Uh, oh, I haven't answered question six. Fair enough. Again, I will try and make the questions available afterwards so that they're. they're Available, they will then get feedback. So if they're incorrect, they'll be told, sorry, incorrect. So the question two, so I've written the feedback for each of the answers. Read the judgments closely. In his judgment, Lord Justice Fox notes, the court has no jurisdiction to make such an order, etc. The same distinction is drawn in the opening paragraph of Lord Justice May's judgment. So they are given feedback that enables them to understand the answer. I don't quite understand why, but I looked at the, the analysis of the question. 184 people answered the quiz this year, which isn't everybody on the module, I'm aware. But that, in total, there were some 300 of submissions. So there were several people who were resubmitting the question. I don't know if they just felt the desire they had to get nine at the end of it. But hopefully they were being told the, the process. I and mean, somebody did it five times before they got nine. Correct? So that was a little bit. Peculiar. What I would like to do is analyse the first responses that I got, for, got from people because what Blackboard's given me averages across every submission. So obviously the results are quite high because as people submit it again, they're tending to get more right than the first time. <laughs> Indeed. So you, you do hope so. Um, just, wind up soon. Yeah, going to wind up. Okay. Going back to the slides. Okay, lessons of best practice from what I've done. I don't be afraid to, to ask for a way in. It took a little bit of perseverance to actually be able to develop this session. Um, I'm in, in looking for an opportunity. Um, so we do have expertise and being willing to actually try and engage in conversation and look for strategic partners within the law school. Continue the conversation. So we've run this now two years and it has developed in the second year and we have modified 
the timings of some of the elements and also the content in particular of the tutorial, second tutorial workbook. It now covers both Just Right and High Online, for example. There are things that I don't personally don't think are quite right. Um, a lot of the we produce these materials, but I'm not necessarily sure exactly to what level the students are engaging with them, because I don't see them doing it. If I've got a classroom in front of me, I get a better sense of exactly what they're doing. It could be that people are actually not really going through the workbook in the detail I would like them to, or they're not focusing on the videos, and when they get to the quiz at the end, they're just quickly putting in any old answer and then redoing it. Hopefully they're not, but I'd like to get a better sense as to what, what actually students are getting from what we're doing. And it does need to be improved direct feedback in relation to the particular interventions I'm doing, I feel. And also to give students some, some opportunities within the um, material to actually reflect on what they're doing and to feed back on that so that they can actually see, you've got to work you through this material, what is it you're learning? Are you understanding what I'm trying to show you an example of and how this might be used? And there still remains a skills gap for advanced level input. So when people are moving to the dissertation level, I think there is still, this focuses on year two, and we move them another level up the scaffold, but there is still, I feel, an opportunity in year three for greater involvement. And I do have plans for that because uh, there is a new lecturer who's covering dissertation and work, and I think she's keen for library involvement in relation to that. So hopefully that's another conversation I can start for next year. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Um, I'm really interested to hear that, about the work that you're doing at level two because it's one of the things that I'm very keen to, to try and, and, and do something about at Sheffield because I think there is this tendency to front load skills stuff, um, perhaps to level one and even to semester one and not to build in that sort of progression and, and building. Do you still do anything at level one, or is, is everything sort of within level two now? No, there's still the comprehensive foundational legal skills program at level one and the research and writing credit, so they remain. Okay. Um, and at level one, my involvement now is I do a lecture on legislation and case law, uh, a lot of it's interpretation of citations and actually being able to understand what a case and, le uh, and a judgment consist of and also what the legislation consists of. So that they're understanding what, when you look at a case or legislation, what actually is the formatting of the information. There's less of the analytical side of that level. Uh, and then they come to me in, I get every student, and that's 20 odd groups this year, we do a workshop in the library where essentially they're given the task of finding some information and they are let loose to try and find it. When they fail to find it, as inevitably they do, there are then people on hand to give them guidance on what are the issues. So it's almost learning by failure. I used to lecture them on exactly what they should do, and they sat there for 20 minutes listening to me talk about this is the steps you take to find a case, to find... They don't go upstairs and they have, clearly haven't, they haven't taken it in. So I basically reversed the process now, so they have they're given the opportunity to work out how much they do know themselves within the library, but it's very much print-based, and there isn't that connection with, yes, you, you see something in print, but when you're moving on to the level of uh, broader legal research and you have a subject or you have a case and you want to find information <coughs> around that case, that wasn't being catered. So that's just stuff that comes into the year two material. Year one, from my perspective, is very much about you know exactly what you want to find, and this is how you find it. Uh, with a level of interpretation. And, and I had another question, if I may, sorry. Um, thinking about the, the recommendation 9, is it, in the LETR review about distinct assessment of, of research skills? Based on the work that the two of you are doing together and what else is done within the law school at Reading, I mean, do, do you feel that you're fulfilling that recommendation? That's certainly what that, we that's designed the LOB. I want to ask everybody. That that's that's what we designed the LOB around. I mean, this is before the level report, obviously, but that, that had been coming down for a long time. It's worth saying, too, that in the first year, that, that although we have a legal skills module, the other first year subjects, the substantive subjects like contract or crime and so on, they each develop one of the skills that's taught. Okay. So, you know, there'll be one that's, that, that particularly focuses on, I don't know, doing, um, I think they do a case report of some sort. Anyway, that's sort of thing. Also, in the final year, 
Um, all our students have to do a piece of research writing. It's either a dissertation or a shorter piece. We used to have two lectures for that, one of which was given by my colleague, which is about starting off. And then I used to take the others because no one else would do them. And I used to lecture on research skills. And it never occurred to me to ask to involve Ross or indeed Ian before him. It never occurred to me to do that. And now we have, as you said, a new colleague, and I've made sure that, because I also have a sign on the teaching director, I made sure that she does dissertation and these other shorter pieces of research skills. And it's really good that she's talking to Ross because they will now be, they will now get a progression. That's the idea. So for her first exposure to what was taught, and she said, oh, well, I'm doing these lectures on these particular yeah. elements of research skills. Where I'm from, they're normally done by the librarian. Is yeah. what, is what she said, to me. And, I, and I thought, yeah. okay, next year we'll, we'll, we'll look at doing that. So hopefully next year. Oh, well, don't, don't let her just. No, I'm not going to allow that. Yeah. You just do it for her. Yeah. She's got to be involved as well. Yeah, well so hopefully next year, hopefully next year, the two of us can work on Perfect. what it is she requires, rather than me just doing it. Otherwise, well, it's just what we used to do. No, 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 that's not, that's not, that's not that's the end. Fine. It's, it's, that's fine. it's uh, obviously neat. Understanding what she actually wants, and also my input into how we what might think they need. understanding what they've already done in the second year, because I don't necessarily want to be yeah. keep repeating them and have some level of reinforcement, but I try to scaffold first year, second year, third year, so actually students have a progression from within each stage. Shall we? Thanks very much.